Hello everyone, Ronix with that another tutorial and in this tutorial today I'll show you guys how I do my retouching and maybe fixing the lighting issues for my outdoor images. I know I've been doing so many videos about how I edit my face or head shots but this is going to be like a full body portrait and as you know I usually shoot in RAW that's why I have my camera filter open right now into my Photoshop so this is my camera interface and I use uh, 12.4 that's the version so a brief information about this image I took this image I uh, of course it's a raw file using a Canon 6D camera and it was an outdoor it was around 7 p.m. and yeah I took it uh, in the garden somewhere so basically the reason that's why I shot in raw or I shoot in raw is because I'm always able to regain back this beautiful the highlights I maybe I kind of blow out you know most most times the material of the cloth reflects so much light back into the lens that's why these highlights get really blown out so I'll show you guys my workflow for my outdoor images or full body portraits in Photoshop so you can as well follow along in Lightroom so for whichever software you're using you can follow along maybe even capture one you can follow along the very same steps so usually i first of all start by calibrating my image and under calibration i basically want to regain back the colors or most of the colors the was looking at the image on the screen of my camera so i come usually i shoot in a uh, adobe landscape sorry I shoot in landscape so depending on the camera you're shooting in you have to know a picture profile for you to be able to use this first step so uh, for older versions you may have it around here and it is under that camera like icon on your camera filter so you find it just above the basic panel so it is shaped like a camera and for this version it is just right here so just come and hit landscape and when you do that you'll notice that you'll get back most of the colors the way you are looking at the image on the screen or at the back of the screen of your camera so since the highlights are really blown out i prefer to knock down the highlights and when i do that you're going to notice that i'm going to get back the detail in this image uh, that i had initially lost when i was trying to shoot this very image so you can see i've gotten back the information so let's say before the before and after so that is the before and this is the after so that is the advantage of shooting in row always so every time you're shooting make sure you shoot in row because you don't know what you're going to be gaining back at the end of or when you get back to office or home to try and review your images then after I tend to knock down my whites too, yeah, to maybe a kind of encounter or balance the lost information in maybe whichever subject or object I, I may have blown out with my lighting. And for my lighting, I use the Godox AD600 in an octa box, 120 centimeters. Then I shot it at ISO 320. 85 millimeter and I shot it at 2.8 and at 250th of a second so basically those are my settings then I prefer to come to my blacks and I knock them down like that to add some little bit of contrast into the image then after doing so you can notice that I have kind, some kind of uh, magentas or reds in this image what I usually want to do I come under tint so in order to encounter for the reds in this image I tend to move this slider towards uh, the opposite side of the magenta as you know under the tint option we have the magenta on your right and the green so the opposite of magenta is green so I have to come and move this slider towards uh, the greens and as you can see I have lost out most of uh, the magentas in this or in the skin tones of the model 
then I come to my shadows and I just knock it up like that. So I don't take it all the way because when you do that, you're going to notice that you're going to get back the information in the background. Yeah, you're going to get it back, but the error right there is because you're going to be losing out on the beautiful contrast in the shadows or in the blacks of the image. I hope you can see uh, what it has done to the hair. It has turned it into gray instead of black, so you didn't want that. So just move it just slightly, and you can see the before and after. There is no big difference. And in this tutorial, I want to show you guys that even if you move this, or you brighten the darks, I'm going to be showing you guys another trick you can use to uh, darken this very part of the hair and get those rich black tones in the hair or in some of the shadows of the image so i come and knock up my clarity like that then after i've done so i'm just going to pump up the exposure a little bit to around uh, 0 0.15 then since i feel like this image is a little bit as oversaturated, I knock down my vibrance to around negative three and also my saturation to around negative two. So I think right now I'm good to go to open the image into my Photoshop. So the other thing I would love to sharpen the image, but I feel like uh, this image uh, is really sharp. If at all, I zoom into maybe the face of uh, the model. Uh, the image is really sharp. I hope you guys can see how sharp uh, this image is on your camera screens because sometimes YouTube tends to uh, compress uh, these images. So after doing so, I'm just going to open the image. But I feel like I still have some kind of magentas when I was zooming the image. So I'm just going to move around... Uh, negative six towards the greens and i'm going to come and hit open so when i hit open it is going to open the image into my photoshop so that uh, we can start doing the retouching on this very image then before we can even retouch i would like to uh, straighten up this image but i'm going to be using the crop tool so as you can notice even from this trash can right here you can see it is kind of slanting and even right here you can see this line is uh, really moving towards this direction so we want to straighten that up a little bit using the crop option so i'm going to come right here and select the crop tool and i'm going to ensure that it is in the original ratio like that i'm going to now start moving it towards uh the opposite direction to straighten it up so for this case i'm going to move it upwards like that until i see like these lines are parallel with these other crop edge lines like that i'm just going to move it slightly i hope uh, that is fine and i'm going to hit enter on the keyboard so now i feel like the image is really straightened up and now we're going to uh, be retouching this image and stay tuned as we retouch this image because I want to show you guys the trick I use for uh, kind of darkening the hair. So that is what we're going to be doing after doing the skin retouching. So let's first of all remove the blemishes or skin imperfections before we retouch. We're going to start by creating the black new layer and getting our spot healing brush tool or for whichever tool you prefer to use uh, for removing those blemishes you're going to come right here and you select sample all layers because you want to sample from the background layer two and get information from the background layer then we're going to uh, zoom in like that by using ctrl or command plus on the keyboard and you're going to uh, ensure that we zoom uh, into the face like that so if at all maybe your cap's key is on, you're going to notice that your spot healing brush tool is going to be like a cross and you didn't want that. So 
make sure you turn off the caps key and reduce or increase on the size of your spot healing brush tool. Uh, we use the left and the right brackets on the keyboard to do that. So just make sure it is bigger than the blemish and just click over the blemish uh, to remove it or get rid of it from your image. So basically, you're just trying to uh, clean up uh, this very image using the spot healing brush tool. You can use the clone sum tool or uh, whichever tool you prefer to use to remove the blemishes. So this doesn't really matter. Uh, what really matters is getting uh, the job done and the removal of uh, these blemishes from uh, the image. So that is basically what I am trying to uh, do right now. And we are going to be uh, done with that really shortly. Uh, because this is not bad skin. So I think we are done with that area. So let's just clean up. Uh, this side too uh, before we can do a skin retouching and remember the mixer brush tool is also going to be helping us to remove uh, the other tiny tiny blemishes that may be remaining uh, in this very image so shouldn't worry if at all maybe you skipped or accidentally missed out on some blemishes because the mixer brush tool is going to deal with all those stubborn uh, blemishes so I think we are done removing those blemishes so what we are going to do we are going to uh, merge these two layers by hitting shift command E on the keyboard and we are going to duplicate the background layer twice by hitting command J or if at all you have the frequency separation action you can just play it right away so we are going to come to our layer one and you're going to name it you're going to name it color and you're going to name the above layer texture like that and you're going to turn this off and blur out uh, the details from the image to remain with only color on this very layer and in order to do that we're going to come to filter blur and come to gaussian blur like that and you're going to uh, make sure we zoom into maybe look, we look for the face of our model right here and we make sure we uh, blur out the details from this very image so let's uh, move this radius until we completely lose out on the details so i'm going to be using a radius of six because uh, we, this has really removed all of the details or textures from the skin of the model so by the way, we're using frequency separation to do the retouching on this image. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to select the texture layer, activate it, and come right here to image, apply image, and uh, select the color layer because we are subtracting the textures from the color layer. And you guessed it right, the blending mode is subtract. Scale is to offset 128, preview is on and hit OK. Come and change the blending mode from normal to a linear light like that. So we're going to put these two in a group. Select them and hit Command G and you're going to name that uh, Frequency Separation FS for Frequency Separation. We're going to open this and create a black and white layer as usual. And you're going to uh, darken it like that to see the imperfect skin tones and select the color layer come and select the mixer brush tool and these are the settings so clean brush wetness 9 load 75 mix 90 flow 100 sample oleas is not marked or selected and this second option right here is highlighted then we want to move a zoom in until we can see the face of our model quite well and they're just going to start blending uh, on the color layer like that so you're just evening out uh, we just evening out the skin tones of the model to get rid of those kind of uh, bumpiness in the skin tones or you're basically trying to even out uh, the skin tones of uh, the model like that that is what I'm just trying to do uh, to this very image. 
So if at all, I'm to show you guys the progress so far by turning off the black and white layer and uh, turning this on and off, you can see the before and after just uh, by using uh, a few uh, strokes of the mixer brush tool. So let's do this quick because uh, for these full body portraits, you don't want to do uh, so much with the retouching because no one is basically going to uh, zoom this image unless it's going to be like for maybe a big print or billboard. So let's just do this. Remember most of these shoots, uh, images are just posted uh, maybe on social media. So basically they're just for social media use or maybe blogs or websites. So you didn't want to uh, spend uh, hours trying to do retouching unless you're trying to maybe uh, prove to someone that you're a good retoucher out there. So let's do this. So basically I'm just trying to show you guys uh, my workflow for outdoor images uh, in Photoshop. So, and you're just what you're doing, you're just using the mixer brush tool to even out or blend the skin tone. So, let's see the progress so far. So, that's the before, after, before, after. So, let's just blend the remaining areas so that we can get to something really or something else because I don't want to really take a long time trying to uh, retouch, like I said, or like I told you before. So let's do this quick and we are going to be done uh, in a little bit. So don't worry if at all uh, you skip out or miss out some of the areas because you're going to be using the lasso tool method to fine tune uh, the areas we may have wanted to have the best skin tone transitions on this very image. So let's turn off and we see the before and after. Turn this on, off, sorry. You can see a before and after. So let's zoom out and see what we have done. So that is a before, after, before, after. So you can um, edit it like that from that very distance uh, to really be precise so you can come and just do the editing on those other remaining areas. So we are done using the mixer brush tool. So what I would love to do, I would love to delete the black and white layer and select the lasso tool. So let's use the feathering of around I want us to use the feathering of around 25 pixels for this image. So let's zoom in and we make a selection on the skin area. But before you do that, make sure you're still on the color layer. Come and select uh, only the skin like that and keep away from the edges. Come to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So just move this until you feel like uh, the skin is really even on the image you're trying to do the retouching on. So I think uh, that is fine. So let me zoom out and I see if at all it is really okay. Okay, so let's uh, do this. So you can come back and apply different Gaussian blur radiuses. I don't know if that is right English on the image. So you can, accord, depending on uh, what you're trying to go in for, I think that is too much. So I just come and reduce that. I think that is okay. I'm going to come and uh, make another selection right there and apply the same value and just come like that. So I'm just trying to even out the skin on the areas I may have missed out when I was using the mixer brush tool. So I think uh, that is fine and looks okay to me. So what I would love to do, I think we're done doing the skin retouching and I would love to show you guys uh, the before and after for this very image. So let me zoom in. So this is the before, after, before, 
after i hope you guys really love what we have just done because i've retained the skin textures in this very image so i'm going to close the frequency separation and what i usually want to do uh since uh, this image really has lost out on the details i'm just going to play my dodge and band to bring back or enhance the shape or dimension in the model's face and i'm just going to play my a dodge and burn action so i'm just going to get it and play it like that i'm sorry if at all it has created all this so let's just delete that and we do it uh, the usual way so i'm going to come right here and i'm going to create a curves adjustment layer i'm going first of all brighten like that and i'm going to make sure this is selected hit ctrl or command i I'm going to name that dodge and I'm going to uh, make a second curves and I'm going to uh, make a midpoint and darken and I'm going to make sure the mask is selected hit control or command I and I'm going to name that uh, burn like that so after doing so I'm going to put these two in a group command G and I'm going to name that group D and B for dodge and burn so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the line option for dodging and burning. So I'm going to get the brush tool, the normal brush tool, opacity and flow at 100%. Smoothening at zero. Make sure white is on the foreground. And I'm going to select the burn. So I want to uh, maybe contour or darken the areas that are were initially dark on this image. So since i know where they were you can say before and after i'm just going to draw lines on those very areas like this so reduce on the size and i'm just going to sorry i'm going to make sure white is on top so i'm just going to draw lines like that uh, to burn those particular areas that are really hard so for this case, I'm just going to burn this very area to add more shape or dimension. I'm going to come right here to the dodge and I'm going to dodge a little bit there. I'm just going to dodge there. I'm going to leave this beautiful highlight. Then I'm going to come to window and I'm going to come to properties. I'm just going to further... Uh, so when you're feathering, you're going to notice that these lines are going to blend into uh, the image smoothly. And I'm going to do the same for the burn, and I'm going to move this. So that they try to blend into uh, the image like that. So after doing so, you can see a before and after, before, after. Let me zoom out. So you can see a before, after, before, after. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this and I'm going to try and show you guys how to darken this part of the hair so that it can really be really dark and rich in color. I'm going to create a stamp visible here before I do even any color grading onto this image by hitting Shift Alternate Command E on the keyboard, Shift Alternate Control E on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. And I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Ctrl or Command J. And I'm going to come right here and I'm going to get uh, the burn tool. So make sure the exposure is at 50%. And the range is right here on the mid-tones. And I'm going to uh, zoom into uh, the hair. Like that. And I'm just going to start painting over the hair. But when you're doing this, make sure you take as a brush or you don't release uh, your click until you're done painting and come back and do the same paint over every part of the hair because we want this darkness to be even and not be uneven so let me do that and i show you i'm just going to move this like this and make sure like every part of the hair has been catered for like that and after doing so, I'm going to come back and I'm going to just add a second uh, round like that. 
and I'm going to do the same for the other side of uh, the hair like this this is the first time but hold down and click and come and do it just the second time like that so let's see the before and after for our darkening of the hair so that's the before after before after so for the areas you may want to darken even more you can just come and add one more round so that is the before after before after the hair has been really darkened and what i would love to do i'm going to start uh, the color grading process on this very image and i'm just going to come to selective color and i'm going to play around with this basically and i'm just going to reduce on the magentas in the image to get those really nice tones like that and i'm going to come to the blacks and i'm going to intensify the darks or the blacks in the image and i think that is it and i'm going to come to the yellows and i'm just going to uh, reduce on the amount of yellows to around negative two so this is the before and after of the selective color it is not too much but it is just are really subtle and um, what I prefer to do I prefer to do some little bit of color grading in camera so we're going to go back into camera row and we're going to be doing some little bit of adjustments in camera row so we're going to come and create another stamp visible by hitting shift alternate control e on the keyboard shift alternate control e or shift alternate command e on the keyboard and you're going to duplicate that by hitting Ctrl or Command J. And you're going to come right here to Filter. And you're going to come to a Camera Filter. So under this, we want to do uh, a little bit of adding some little bit of uh, exposure into the image. Like that. And I want to do some eye whitening for this image. So zoom into the eyes of the model like that and come right here and get our adjustment brush tool and as usual i created the preset for my eyes and teeth so i make sure the temperature is negative 25 tint is 60 so basically these are my settings for the adjustment brush tool for eye and teeth whitening highlights at four the white the whites at four and saturation because I want to remove color from the white area of the eye I make sure the saturation is all the way to negative 74 then I'm just going to leave the others at zero and I'm just going to get it and start painting over the white area like that of the eye to uh, really whiten it like that so I think we are done uh, doing the eye whitening for our model and if at all you feel you want uh, the eyes to pop a little bit more just come and knock down the temperatures even more to around 27 then you can come back to the basic adjustments and you play around with the hsl panel or the greens uh to play around with the colors right there if at all you really want to uh, play around with these colors so you can uh, come and play with them even more but make sure you're not affecting uh, the color of uh, the model's cloth or clothing so i think i'll go with that and i'm just going to come the saturation and reduce on the saturation of my greens like that so you can see the before and the after before after if at all you're really satisfied with you're retouching like I am open the image back into Photoshop and let's see the overall uh, things we have done for our retouching and color grading on this very image so I'm just going to scroll all the way down hold down the alternate key and turn this on and off to see a before and after for everything we have done so that is the image before sorry after this is the before after before after 
before after i hope you really love what we have done with the retouching of this image and if at all you would love to see uh, everything i do for my outdoor shoots and i think we are we are going to be doing maybe videos about outdoor images and how i do retouch them so that we can learn how to do the skin retouching on outdoor images too or full body portraits and if at all you love this story don't forget to like this video drop a comment in the comment section i'm ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet another tutorial on this channel don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating